Hello, welcome to this demonstration of Astro Navigation in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is a, an art that's forgotten, but I will show you in about 50 minutes how it's done. Hope you like it. For this flight, we'll take the flight that Amelia Earhart undertook with her navigator Fred Noonan in 1937 um, from Lai in Papua New Guinea on the way to Howland. Uh, it's a long stretch, over 2000 miles, and unfortunately they did not make it, and they were lost forever. A long flight, over 18 hours of flying. Um, quite a challenge to do it in 15 minutes, So, but bear with me, I will give it a try. The challenge is that the island is very small. Howland Island is a very, very small island in a very large ocean, and very difficult to find. And for this flight we will not use a GPS, we will not use a VOR, we will not use an ADF. What we will use is a traditional aviation sextant. Now how does it work? A sextant basically measures an angle, an angle between the horizontal plane and a body in the sky, in this case the Sun. That's all it does, it measures an angle, in this case 53 degrees and a bit, um, how high the Sun is up. To understand this, picture yourself standing near a light bulb. And if you measure the angle to the light bulb, and you know where it is directly, overhead, you can figure out that you're in a circle around it. A lower angle means you're farther away. Now, on a 3D Earth, things are different. The Earth is curved, the Sun moves, the Earth rotates, and the airplane flies. And this makes it all so much more difficult in the number crunching part. But not just the Sun. In the first part of the flight, we will be flying in daylight, and then we will rely on the Sun. Then there will be dusk. And then at night, we have the stars, and then we will be taking shots of the stars. Towards the end of flight, dawn, sun will come up and hopefully we will be able to spot the island visually. That's enough talk, let's take off. Here we go, the lift off for 18 hours of flying. As you can maybe see, we are using the Groom and Goose by Big Radials as an aircraft that somewhat resembles the Lockheed Electra that was used by Earhart and Noonan. To an engine, pretty slow. And the first thing we do is prepare a sun shot at 600 hours. It is filling in a form with a lot of tables and numbers and prepare the sixth shot. As you can see, the sun is high up. There are a few clouds, all good visibility all around and ready to take the shot at 600 hours. So in the cockpit it's 4 o'clock, uh, we use UTC time 6 o'clock, uh, 10,000 feet, 127 knots and this is the end of the sextant reading, here comes the value in the uh, window uh, top left and there we go and we enter that value in the form 19 degree 27 minutes of arc and we compare it with the value of 19 and it's called an intercept of 27 miles and that is a value that we plot. It's a distance from where we thought we were to where we actually are. And uh, the special technique, it's too much detail to explain here, but basically uh, it puts us on a, a line, it's called an LOP, line of position. And when you combine that with the circle of our uncertainty of compass bearing and compass uh, and um, stopwatch, that puts us at the intersection right there. Right, by now it has turned to night. You can see it's all dark, it's very dark as a matter of fact. And from here we'll be shooting stars. Uh, we are now preparing the 1700 UTC shot um, in about four minutes from now. And we're just happily cruising along. And this is the form uh, that we prepared for it. This is a big difference here um, that in the night we'll be shooting three stars, so there's much more data in the table. 
on the right hand side the numbers basically indicate the position of the stars, where the stars are in terms of latitude longitude, where they are directly overhead. The left side of the form applies a number of corrections and changes. And this is the difference between maritime navigation by the stars and airborne. On a ship, um, the speed is slow, you have all the time in the world to first take the shot and then process the data. With an aircraft you don't. You do all the measurements beforehand. And because of the speed you need to make corrections for the time between the various shots. So the, the different stars, three stars in this case, Hamal, Akanar and Altair, are four minutes apart and you need to make allowance for those four minutes apart. And that's what's on the left side of the table being entered right now. So with the form completed we can proceed to performing the actual shots. But first we need to check whether we can actually see the stars, whether there's no clouds between them. That's what we do here. That's one star. Amal. You can s and uh, what I like about uh, MSFS is that the depiction of the of the sky is actually true to life. It's very correct, very detailed, and all the stars are in the correct position. So then uh, we have the solution, uh, three measurements. That means we start drawing again three lines and three perpendicular lines that give us three lines of position on, on which we are. And obviously if you are on three lines at the same point, you are actually on the cross point of the three lines. The reality is there is not one cross point, there's uh, a triangle. That means we are in the triangle and usually we take the center point of the triangle as our next position. Now this procedure we repeat every hour. At half hour we prepare the form find and check the stars, take the shots, plot the solution and so on and then there's small time for a break. If we do that for every hour this is what you get a full flight with measurements every hour all the way from Lai to Howland at one hour intervals a position fix and that will require several corrections, the wind will change uh, the speeds may change, anything may change and you're very unlikely to find this island just by compass. Now the final bit is a bit different. This is called the landfall procedure. Imagine you're trying to find an object, a target that's along a river. So you know you will cross a river but unsure left or right of the target so you don't know which way to turn. The solution is to deliberately fly off to one side, in this case to the left, and then you know that you need to turn right to find the objective. Now replace the uh, the river by a line of position and put the water instead of the land and you will see how this is done to find Howland. We fly off to the left until we reach the line of position uh, for the sun at the time we are due to arrive. This is not so easy because we don't know when to arrive because we don't know where we are. So to do this we make a plot that displays the various altitudes of the sun over time and we measure our approach to that line. So you see a number of points coming up. Um, this line is the sun rising and our aircraft will be like this. So at the point where the two lines intersect that is the point where we need to turn to the right and we'll, it will look like this. It's, it's not so easy uh, but very, very effective. And so here we are at sunrise. Very nice to see the sun coming up after this long night. You can see how nicely it's done, how nicely it's rendered. And f this is the moment when we start taking sun shots to find the line of position when we need to turn right in the landfall procedure. And then, after the turn, we just need to keep a good look out and spend some calculation on the time to the island keep a good look out and if you look carefully then hey ho presto is that an island or is that not an island that must be it you can see how small it is and how easily it is to miss overflying the island set up for a nice landing and we can see by the shape that it is actually Howland destination found coming in for landing very barren there's no runway just put it between the trees Nice and easy. And there we are, 
finally Howland Island. Let's take a look at what we did. Here's little nav map. And I plotted the I enabled the course. You see us going left and right to stay on the course with all the measurements. You can see the landfill procedure on the end. We overshot the line, turned back, spotted the island, and there's the uh, the landing maneuver. And you can see how we followed the track and uh, the, the intended course during the night. If I enable back all the measurements, you can see how we nicely went through most of the triangles. You don't have to necessarily go through, but uh, that's all statistics. It did serve the purpose. And a very rewarding result of all the effort of number crunching and plotting. And there we are. Um, that was it. I hope you liked it. I hope it inspired you. Thanks for watching.